The things he can do with the ball, I've got him right up there with the best, um, you know, seven in the game right now because of what he's had to do around him with the players missing. We've seen in moments this year, I'll go back to the Newcastle game, that when he played fullback, he absolutely tore them to bits. You know, you've got someone of that quality and that dangerous, you can be stubborn for so long, but if it's hurting you, you've got to make that, that tough decision. Yes, kia ora whanau. we're back again with another episode of Runner Straight, and here we are again. Ethram, Dills, and my man, Willie. How was your weekend, guys? All good, oh. busy, man, busy. Me. Busy? Yep, that was me. Busy but good. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Okay, so, but, hey, for, for everyone that's watching, and as always, I like to say, keep liking, keep subscribing, keep leaving your comments and your thoughts. It helps us be better with our show. And while we're talking about being better with our show, I've got a couple of guys, Ethram and Dills, who won't be here for the next four weeks. They are doing it over Remotely. in Samoa. How From good? From Samoa, yeah. You know, up the tour. Up the tour. Over in Yo. Samoa. So, hey, this is how good we're going. We are taking that <laughs> remotely. Um, but Willie and I are going to be still here uh, holding it down in the local. So, um, yeah, stay tuned and watch all this stuff. And before we go and kick off the show, we've also picked our mid-season awards, which is out now on our YouTube channel, Run It Straight. So make sure you go and check that one out and give us your thoughts as well. Anyways, Ethram. What's going on with this episode? What do we got? Let's hop straight into some news as always, eh? Uh, starting off with Luke Carey, right? So the bro said he was going to retire last month. Well, first he re-signed with the Roosters for a year. Then he's changed his mind. He said, I'm retiring. And now he's changed his mind again. <laughs> and he is uh, signed with the Catalan Dragons uh, over in France in the Super League uh, for the next season. How, how about that? Yeah, not a bad spot, eh, Willie? Beautiful. Perpignan, <laughs> south of France. Perpignan. And not far from the Pyrenees, two hours from Barcelona. Oh. Beautiful spot to live. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people that go there uh, stay there f for a long time. You saw that with Jimmy Maloney when he went across. He stayed on for a couple of years afterwards uh, with the lifestyle. Uh, Sammy Moore was there for a long time. Uh, interesting one, this one, because there's some rumblings coming out of Catalan that uh, – Tokiao isn't real happy. He's a bit homesick. Uh, Sio Sua Tokiao has been wanting to come home. In fact, he left last year. They No one picked him up, so he went back to Catalan for his second year. Homesick now. Whether they do a trade to get him back in, um, Roosters probably get him a lot cheaper than what he would have been. Mm. And Luke Carey gets to uh, prolong his career. I know he loved the World Cup and representing Ireland and being across there. So he's not far from family that he's met and wants to be around that. So a uh, good opportunity for him to carry on his career and, and play. There's also uh, Steve McNamara, the coach for the Catalans. He was an assistant at the Roosters for a little while. So they've got some familiarity there. Wasn't... Um I thought Luke Carey was finishing up because he had a few. Was it to do with some some head I, knocks I and stuff was, like he that? He had well? a head knock right before then, and then yeah, that's what prompted him saying that. But I, I mean, I guess he's now that he's strapped up in the Roosters, yeah. been doing so good. I still think he's got a lot to offer to the game, and if, if there's an opportunity over in Catalan, then I think it's great. I think is Jaden Nicolima still over there? Jaden Nicolima. So to, to link up with you know, like Jaden, I think there's there's great opportunities over there, like. Like Willie said, it's close to everything. It's nice and warm. Um, you're not going into into a place where it's cold. So I think he, he could offer a lot to the Catalan Dragons. And he yeah, has a great sign. And see what I thought. See what there was a there was a um, um, chance there that he was going to the Bulldogs a long time uh, last year yeah. when it was um, Gus Gould was talking about it, but didn't manage to go through. But like you said, it could be an opportunity to you know get, bring him home and then transfer over and, and take Luke. Well, Kerry, the Dogs but, have just signed Tom Amon yes. from uh, from the Lee Leopards. So whether they won another front row, they yeah. could still be in, in the running. But yeah, they're looking for players over there too. Mm. We talk about a future, possible future Super League. Let we can uh, hop over to a past Super League, yeah. a great um, Ali Laotiti. He has joined yeah. the Leeds Hall of Fame. Willie, you'd know yeah. a lot about all of that stuff. Yeah, fantastic news. Um, he's over there at the moment. Nice. Uh, the club flew him over to be part of the celebrations. It's 20 years since he first got there in the, the 2004 side, won the grand final. Uh, they had a bit of a, a celebration at the Hall of Fame dinner with the 2004 and 2014 sides. 
celebrating the decades since they've won. And Ali being there this afternoon, uh, English time was inducted into the Hall of Fame, only the first Kiwi, the first Pacific Islander into the Leeds Rhinos Hall of Fame. A massive honour and uh, a justified induction for Ali and the service that he gave the club. He was a great man for the group. We all know his quality that mm. he brought on the field, but his quality off the field and what he brought to the community. I know a lot of people uh, have been flocking around the big man. There was a big night on Friday when they played the Lee Leopards to celebrate the life of Rob Barra. So they got all of Rob's old teammates. There was about 90 blokes there that played with Rob and it was a good catch-up for Ali, but everybody mm. flocked around Ali because they, they remember what he did and how awesome he was and great that he's recognised with his honour. He's quite a humble man too, Ali. I see him around the oh, Warriors yeah. Club at the moment. So to have people come, like you said, flock around him, he would be he would be bloody he wouldn't know what to do with himself. <laughs> but I think, you know, as well as what he's done over in the Super League, the legacy that he's left here in New Zealand and in the NRL and what he'd done for the game over here was enormous as well. So it's a great recognition for someone that only not only did a, a, a good job here on the field and off the field in New Zealand, but also over in the Super League. And they obviously hold him to to uh, that high that he's now in the Hall of fame over there for Leeds and, and a strong club Leeds as well. Yeah, eight years, five grand finals. Yeah, successful time what for him. Shit. Uh, we'll move on to uh, some NRL transfer news. So last week I brought it up, but it was only a rumour and now it's pretty concrete. <laughs> Damian Cook is uh, headed to the Dragons on a two-year deal, 500k a season. Apparently, the reports from all the news stations say that Wayne Bennett uh, had a call with him and told him that it's probably the right move for himself yep. and for his family to take that, you know, big money deal uh, for the longer time than yep. he would re-sign him for at the Rabbitohs. So he'll be moving on at the end of the season. Yeah, well, Wayne's um, a smart person when it comes to those things, and he always thinks about the person rather than obviously the rugby league and what happens around it. So when you've got a, a club that can pay you so much money and Wayne at, at South maybe not being able to pay so much, He's obviously said that this is be beneficial not only for your your rugby but also for your family and setting your fam family up as well at the Dragons. I think it's a great signing for the Dragons. Yes, he's a little bit older, but I think he can get some good. He's still got a good couple of years left in him to be able to guide and help that Dragons team be better than where they are now. With obviously having Ben Hunt in there as well and some good young talent around him, some good young forwards coming through as well. I think he's a, a, a good ad addition. To the Dragons, and I think he, you know, I've seen the best out of him the last few weeks uh, since um, all the troubles that they've had, but all the consistency that they're having now. Damien Cook's best when he's running the ball out of, out of dummy half, and, and when the forwards can create momentum, that's when he plays his best footy. So I think it's a, a great signing for, for the Dragons. I think he can add so much value to that place, but he'll also help either someone like Ben Hunt and the young guys around him. Yeah, I think it's a big signing. It's a really good signing on a couple of fronts. His experience. And as Blairy said, his form the last couple of weeks has been immense. He's got back to what he's good at. Now, having people like Keon Kulamatangi and Tom Burgess mm. really going forward well allows him to play. And then he's had the support of Latrell outside of him. And uh, I think he's looking a lot happier. But he gets to go home. He gets to go back to where he grew up, yeah. where he played his junior footy. He gets to give back to the community in which he, he started his footy at. But I think at, at that price, 500000 I think it's a good price for mm. the, for the Dragons too. They get a quality player. Yeah, he's getting a bit longer in the tooth and a bit older, and, but by no means has he passed it. He's still got a lot of footy left in him and I think it would be uh, complimentary, I agree, with Ben Hunt and Kyle Flanagan to what their team's try. They've just signed Sloan again on a long-term yeah. deal. Mm. I think that's a spine that can be really dangerous for the Dragons. Do you think from a Rabbitohs like perspective, it sh sort of shows their intent of maybe where they're going to go under Wayne Bennett due to his obviously his age? Maybe it's they're going to go more youth based with their recruitment and stuff like that, or yeah. Well, I, I think if you look at most of the clubs now, that's this is the the new trend. They're trying to, again. You don't get much time in the game of NRL through the year to try and be to to win every game because there's so much pressure in the game. But if you can start bleeding in these younger guys, you can get the reward later down the track. So I think most of the clubs, and a lot of the clubs are bringing in these guys, these younger guys now have, that have so much energy that are challenging the line all the time. And I'm guessing that's what he's looking at. He's wanting a younger guy that they can build a club around that's going to be, 
a Damien Cook for a longer period. Um, you know, signing on for a year or two most probably doesn't look like it's going to be anything for the future for, for selves. But you're bringing in some young kids through, some young developed kids that are coming through, then you've got a longer future for these guys. So I think that's where a lot of the clubs are trying to look to now. I think it's where the game is at. It's a young man's game now. It's that fast. And with the rule changes, six agains, and the continuity, it's very much an attacking-based game now. You know, the, the advantages to the attacking team. So it's that quick. I think the advantages with the younger fellas, you can carry some older blokes and you need to carry mm. some experience in your side, but you can't carry too many. You can't, I think, two or three at most you can have. But we're starting to see the young fellas and the faster blokes, the smaller blokes, are really taking advantage and coming to the fore and the new rules and coming to be the excitement machines in the game. Uh, next up is... Uh an extension offered mm. to Adam Dewey. So obviously <clears throat> we'll get back to him when we come on to that game, but he had his first game back in NRL in over 400 days uh, and the Tigers have now extended him for next season as well. So good to hear for that guy. He has had a, he's had a rough ride, eh? Yeah, well, I think he's that's his third ACL injury um, and I guess the mental strength that he has to be able to overcome all these obstacles has been obviously a remarkable effort from him himself and like you said we'll get to his game but someone that's just hung in there worked really hard I know he was back in New South Wales Cup and playing down there uh, but he was too good for, for, for that league and now he shows himself in the NRL I think a reward for his perseverance staying strong and mentally tough having good support around him and now getting his opportunity at NRL level. He's he's a quality player and a great uh, recognition for, I guess, the sacrifice that he's given to that club, but also to be able to come out and perform uh, last night. Yeah, I think the question mark was about the timing of the signing because he hadn't played first grade then. Yeah. And he'd been out for so long, had so many injuries. I think a lot of people were waiting to see how he was when he came back. The club were happy, obviously. They were happy with how he was tracking with the medical team and how he was going with in New South Wales Cup, that they felt like, yep, we'll give you a deal. He justified that deal on the weekend for me with his performance. He'll only get better and better mm. as he grows confidence from his injury and grows confidence, his timing becomes better. But, geez, he hit the ground running on the weekend. So, yeah, good on him. Good on him. He's, he's a good young player still. So it's good that he's obviously passed that long break from injury, but... Unfortunately, there's some news yeah. of uh, some other guys who are in their own uh, injury crisis at the moment. Both uh, Campbell Graham and Tyrone Munro, coach of the Rabbitohs, Ben Hornby, came out and said it's unlikely that either of them will play mm. again for the rest of this season. Uh, so Campbell Graham had that sternum surgery in preseason and then Munro injured his collarbone in his first game, which was, I think, the second game of the season. And both of them just haven't been on the cards and now he's come out and said, yeah, they're in rough straits. They're not looking like they're going to return this season. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough old year for, for Souths. Uh, not only obviously losing their coach, going through some tough times early in the season. Yes, come out the other end, but then to add to a little bit of the, the toughness, losing someone like Cavill Graham, who's uh, NRL player quality right now um, and was in most of the conversations, Australia... New South Wales uh, for, for his performance and what he can bring to them. One of the most sound defenders, I think, when it comes to to uh, defending out in the centres. But, you know, and underestimate him and what he can do. I think he's a great player. But that's going to, um, again, I think with these guys is that you've got to have these young guys coming through. And this is all about your development and how you're going to fill those voids. Um, it's unfortunate that both players are out. Um, Tyron Manuro is, is a young kid that's on, on the rise and plenty of time on his side. But I think, you know, it's tough news for that. They're losing two quality outside backs. Yeah, it's a shame. Tyron Munro alone for himself. It's a shame he has only played a couple of games at the start of the year until he got injured. Probably had a big pre-season, was excited about the season ahead and then he succumbs to that collarbone injury. Um, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd hope when you get injured that, that early in the season, you'll be back at some point. So to get the news that you're going to be out for the, the rest of the season will be devastating. It's a bit like having an ACL. You know, the news that your season's over after all that hard work, he's, he's just got to go back, work again, get get another preseason, and try again next year. Campbell Graham, he's a huge loss for them and has been. You know, he 
He'd already played for Australia at the World Cup. Mm. He was there were some moments when they used to play some scrum plays and he'd score nearly every time off that play. So he was so dangerous on that right edge. They've used Richie Kenner, who they've told he can look elsewhere. So they're probably confident that he is going to come back next year and take that spot when Richie Kennard goes. So they're hopeful and that's got to give them some confidence. And again, a bit like Tyron, uh, like Munro, he's just got to get himself fit, get himself happy, be happy mentally and be comfortable where he is and just be uh, optimistic that next season will be another year that he can make up for this one. Good luck to those boys for their recovery and hopefully we can see them again as soon as possible. Uh, moving on to under-19s origin. So oh. it was a big weekend for the Blues, baby. <laughs> the Blues <laughs> took out the women's under-19s 46-4, to uh, the men's 14-10, to and they were so good they even managed to win the Super Rugby final. That's how good the Blues were. Up the Blues, you reckon. Up the Blues, eh? Yeah. <sighs> Uh, yeah, did you guys see any snippets from those games? Or Yeah, caught a, caught a bit of the snippets. Obviously, the women's was before the, the men, so it got to oh, for, before the young young boys. Um, I thought the, the women team, the girls were dominant uh, throughout that whole game. Um, the pathway for the New South Wales women is, is great. You look at their 19s and you look at their their women's team in the origin, geez, they've got some young good young talent coming through as well, and they're... They're athletic, they're mobile, they're fit, they play fast. Um, and then it's only going to help when they go into the next stage. I think a lot of them are already signed with NRLW clubs, which is great to see. They're obviously doing some really good things over in Australia through those through those pathways. And the same with, with the men. I think, you know, there's some young talent down in the men's grade and the young boys there. And I think, you know, Chevy Stewart was obviously a standout player of the match. He's played NRL already. I think he's got some he's great talent to the game. And there was big hypes around him anyway before the game. And he and he proved how good he was in that game. Some big boys out there, Willie. Um, you know, and we spoke about on the show about how big are the, the players are getting now at this, this, this younger age group. You know, 197 centimetres, you know, nearly two you know, two metres. Some of those guys, you know, they're, they're Ben Takuda, Xavier Willison style of footballers, big, tall things, athletic, move fast. Um, it's great. It's great for the, the future of the game. I think this is what it shows is it's a great pathway to where they want to go. What I also do like Ephraim and Wills is a lot of these kids are born in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Again, um, families move away for opportunities and... You know, this is what what Australia creates for a lot of Kiwis and Pacific people as well. Is that it creates an opportunity for 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 better work, for more opportunities over there. And then our kids that are born here and go with their family, they end up getting into systems over there in, in Sydney or Queensland and go into the schools who have programs and developing programs for for rugby league. Um, it's it's a it's a class. It's a you study this 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 subject that is rugby league. They 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 live and breathe it from the ages of five. I'm not saying we don't do it here, but they have it at school. This is the difference when it comes to the pathways here in New Zealand. Is they do this rugby league program, school of excellence, in schools over there in Australia. So these kids, they're talented. They've got everything. It looks good on on screen, and there's a there's a pathway. But I'd love to see a lot of these guys either come over to Samoa and Tonga or New Zealand, again, we have to be better with our pathway systems over in Australia as in Māori, um, as in New Zealand and Pacific. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited about the pathways and what these two games show is that the future is bright and exciting. There's already some of these young boys that have uh, experienced NRL, like Chevy Stewart, they've had a taste of it. And it's interesting... Uh, watching some of the clips of some of the New South Wales, Brian Tor in particular, mm. saw a clip of him talking about when he played under-19s and showing some of the players that came through and pretty much all that back line are in our, in our players now and some of them are even in his New South Wales squad. So this is an important breeding ground. Mm. This is an important place for these guys to learn their career you know, and they stick together and they go on. So it's not just a one-off for these guys and the same will be for the women as the NRLW grows so will the opportunity for these young women to go. So they're the future. They're the future of the game. And as Blairy said, New South Wales' future is just a little bit brighter than Queensland at the moment at that level. But as we know, when it comes to that next level, 
No, it's a different story. When they start to mature, <laughs> Queensland, the Maroons, <laughs> and the women, they're still the benchmark and showing you follows out a go. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's an important breeding game, and, and well done to both New South Wales sides for doing really well. Willie, I mentioned I mentioned obviously the the New Zealand heritage kids born in New Zealand, the Pacific guys in particular. How do we? How do we not lose? Because I'm guessing fans are going, how, why are there so many Pacific players playing all through the origin, both women, uh, younger young men, and even in that origin level, the higher level? How do how do we try and encapsulate these guys and want them to play for either Samoa, Tonga or New Zealand? But we have to set something up. Yeah, we've got to create opportunities. And by opportunities, I mean we've got to put games on for these guys to play. You know, not every one of these guys, mm. especially at this level, are going to play for the actual Kiwis or the actual Tour Samoa mm. or Australia. They're not ready there yet. So underneath, and New Zealand's got the New Zealand A the New side. Zealand A stuff, yeah. And if there's a, a New Zealand A or an A international competition, that may be possible. The challenge for our country, for Samoa in particular, is finances. Mm. You know, trying to get sponsors to put that on and host and where do we play the games and then there's flights and, and costs that are incurred in it. But to get those players involved, we've got to give them something to attach to mm. and, and keep them something that every single year they're associated with it and not just a one-off or wait till they play Super League. Cause yep. they, we, wait till they play NRL because we might lose them in the meantime. So so 14s, 15s is most probably the target for, for those pathways. Eh? I think if we're in Australia and you're creating pathways there at the 14s, 15s, then you're giving them something to aspire to earlier rather than 19s level because by then I think you've kind of lost, lost those guys. But at the same time, a lot of the Pacific boys and girls can play for... Samoa and Tonga and still represent origin at that origin level because they're a tier, tier two nation. So they're very lucky that they can play for both. And I'm guessing the NRL ain't going to take those guys out of the competition because it'll deplete the higher game. Because if you go through the higher teams, New South Wales and Queensland, you look through there and you look at all the Pacific players through there, most of them are Pacific players, you know. So, right. so there's not going to be a way that the NRL are going to say, hey, no, you can go play over there. They're going to try and keep them in this space because... The origin is the pinnacle for the NRL. They make the most money. Everyone yeah. knows that. Everyone's watching eyes are on there. So somehow we've got to get into those younger grades and create uh, a competition within a competition or a pathway within a pathway and then try and breed. Yeah, them and over there. here we have the PYC. We have yes. the Pacific Youth Cup already. And there's some players that come across from Australia. But if Australia have something like that, mm. and there's uh, some people um, in Queensland. Yeah. Um, gentleman by the name of Matthew Tuisamu. He does a great job for yep. Queensland uh, Tour Samu. Yep. He does a really good job. There's some people in New South Wales doing the same. So there is those opportunities. Yeah. We're trying to do it. But that pretty much stops at 18s. It's, mm. it's in between that yeah, yeah. and the international level. Yeah, yeah. Got to try and fill that space. Maldives have something similar over there as well. And we're, they're obviously trying to create those pathways for New Zealand as well. For our, our kids that are, have New Zealand heritage, they can play for New Zealand as well. Also Queensland, New South Wales. And try and create a competition over there at a certain time of the year where they actually want to go, hey, I want to represent New Zealand. Um, here's a competition between... Queensland heritage-based Kiwis and New South Wales heritage-based Kiwis. So it'll be great if we can kind of keep keep giving the kids opportunities to give them the option to whether we're not saying play for New Zealand or play for Samoa or play for Tonga. You can play for whoever you want, but here's an opportunity. That's right. Sweet as. <clears throat> and with that, we'll move on to the week's games. Obviously, less games this week. Yep. Uh, but, man, still a lot of fun games. Uh, one of them being the first game, Dolphins versus Storm at Suncorp. 30-24 to the Storm, solidifying themselves at mm. the top of the table. And man, Jerome Hughes, bro. He's the man, eh? He is actually the man. But what a game. I thought this was, you know, two, this was going to be a quality game no matter what. Two good teams going at it, 1v4. Uh, both love attacking at the minute. Um, you know, I guess the Storm wouldn't be happy with their def defence that they've had in the last three three, four weeks, the last month, I guess. But to be able to still win uh, is what, I guess, the two points is more important. But at the same time, they want to fix up the defence. Some of the tries that were scored, it's not Storm-like, but they're good enough to actually beat teams. Um, the Dolphins love what they're doing as well. Like, they are 
they've always been, I guess, for me, a smoky team into the eight, but they've found themselves in the four. Like, the way that Wayne Bennett's got these guys going, um, it's been outstanding, I think, between, you know, their, their, their spine and then their outside backs and then some of the guys that they brought in. Um, yes, they're missing Flegler, but some of the other guys that they've had around them have been able to get a, a job done. Some of, some of the guys that they've brought in from reserve grade that are coming in getting a job done, awesome. Um, Cody is playing well. Isaiah Katoa is playing well. Drew Marshall King has been good for the middle of the park. But they come up against a, a player, Jerome Hughes, who I thought was enormous on Friday night. Friday night, yeah. Friday night. So I think, um, yeah, Friday night. And like the things he can do with the ball, I've got him right up there with the best, um, you know, seven in the game right now uh, because of what he's had to do around them with the players missing. You know, haven't hasn't had Harry Grant consistently. Pepin hasn't hasn't been there. Um, he's had to mix and mingle with out having Munster as well and, and being able to still control a game but playing eyes up footy. That's what I like about Jerome Hughes is, you know, yes, he can put you to corners and, and complete real high, but he also can kick to a corner where someone like Will Warbrick's a beneficiary of a, a nice kick but playing eyes up footy. So between everything that he's done this year, I reckon he's right up there with, if not the the, the best seven right behind Cherry Evans right now for what he's had to do, deal with this year. Yeah, exciting game. Fantastic game, this one. Uh, when Kenny Bromwich scored after three minutes mm. and then four minutes later, the Storm come back and score, you knew it was going to be an exciting game. So um, it was it lived that out. And Jerome Hughes, every time he touched the ball, he was outstanding. Um, his crossfield kicks, his grubber kicks, he even set up a kick for uh, for Jermaine Sarkle to make a break and go and score. So... Yeah, uh, he's not only one of the best halfbacks, he's one of the best players in the league at the moment. And Melbourne Storm are flying. And uh, they've learned a lot of lessons. Uh, the Dolphins from last year, they got off to a flyer. They um, they fell away back in, but they're sticking with it. They'll be Smokies and talk about the eight. They might be in that four by the end of the season. Yeah, uh, it's Jerome Hughes obviously had a eye injury or an injury that kept him out a little bit early in the season. So he's only played 11 games. But mm. out of those 11, the Storm have won 10 of them. So, I mean, how's that for him? He, he's, a, he's a quality player. He's an international level. He's smart. Um, he's a footballer too. Like, he can play both structure and unstructured football. Um, so, you know, they're very lucky to have someone like Jerome Hughes in there. I think he's kept that team together this year with the way that he's played and how he's been able to lead the team around. There'd be moments on that on that that game on Friday night that he wouldn't be happy with. I think I saw his press conference, um, and there was moments that he said, you know, he could have kicked better. Uh, There's a couple of errors around him. He could have chose the right option. But all in all, his games this year, his his games that he's played, he's been enormous. And then again on that on that game, Tevita Pangai was back. There was big hype around him um, coming back into the game after the way he left uh, from the Bulldogs going into the boxing. The bro saw 30 seconds of the ring when he went to boxing and he was having a sleep. <laughs> uh, but the bro, you got to give him credit, you know what I mean? Like he's had that much outside noise, I think, since he's since he's come into the game of rugby league because everyone knows what he can do. He was playing Origin for New South Wales at one stage there. So And then, you know, he come out and said all, what he did. But he come out the line on... Um, on Friday night and made a statement. Yes, he was offside, but play on. <laughs> hey, if you're ever going to come into the game and make a statement in rugby league, that was that was the statement there. I liked what he did off the ball. Um, I'm a big believer in what you do off the ball. It helps, you know, everything else around him. So he's kind of got the mindset of making sure that he gets the little things right first before he starts worrying about everything else, doing a 100 hitter or doing, you know, 10, 20 hit-ups and, and carrying the ball so much, but being really precise with his offloads because he's got a nice, good little left-hand offload. I think that helped the Dolphins the other night too with being able to break up the, the Storm defence. But, yeah, great to see him back on the field. He's only going to get better from there. Love to see what he can do further on in the back end of this year. I could just see Wayne Bennett in the dressing room <laughs> before the game with Tavita and tell him, rolling him up, stoking the fire, <laughs> telling him, you go, go get me somebody and... And almost when he went out and he made that shot on, on Lior, he's just uh, looking up. Is that what you wanted, coach? Yeah, yeah. 
on anything else, just let me know. So yeah. he's, got an, yeah, yeah, he's got an enforcer there now. Yeah, besides being offside, everything else was fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Besides being offside. Yeah. Just like, a touch. Yeah, just a touch offside. Like, the hit was fine. You know, the work over the top, yeah, he gave him a little whack. He didn't hit him high, didn't hit his head. So... I thought, you know, like like I said, if you wanted to make a statement and, and coach, she asked me to do something, he's going to back him. If the coach asks him to do something, he goes and get it, gets it done, whether it was, you know, offside or not. He he got it, he made a statement, he come out, he took the pressure off, you know, off the Dolphins and himself and then and played a game of footy. But they were unlucky, I thought, you know, both teams are quality yeah, sides. They are deserve to be where they are. And while they lost... I think Wayne Bennett will be proud that they fought right to the end. Mm. Issa Arkel goes really close with yep. about a minute to go. They get the drop out. They almost score again. Uh, you know, Nick Arima makes a yep. dart under the post, throws it out and just loses it. They fought right to it. And that's the type of team they are now. They're very, very dangerous from start to finish. Pappenhausen also is back from his uh, operation that he had. Interesting one I'd like to hear your thoughts on is he only ran for 61 metres. Yeah. Played the full 80, but only ran 61 metres. Do you think maybe that's a decision that, you know, Bellamy and the rest of the coaches have thought like, oh, let's not stress him out too much? Yeah, well, I think, I think in the in the press conference, um, press conference, Bellamy said he didn't really want to play him like the full the full 80. Um, but, I, you know, I thought he would have been more involved. I didn't really watch him closely. The game was that exciting. You're watching whatever yeah. was happening around him. So I would have thought he would have been higher than the 61 metres. But I guess he gets he gets a try. He gets through the game. That's more important. He's going to be better for the, for the run next week. I think, you know, he's, he's come from that many injuries. He's had that many demons on the outside there just trying to get ready to go. Um, uh, he said that he was real focused. He actually asked. He said he was going to put him down in New South, or New South Wales Cup or Queensland Cup that they play first, and then bring him in. But he said this is the most prepared I've seen him uh, be for any game coming back after injury. So he was really, um, I guess, positive in his approach, but also understood that if Ryan wasn't ready, he wouldn't have played him. But he said this was the most prepared I've seen him after an injury. So, you know, he's back on the field. He'll be better for it. Yeah, and he said that Pappenhauser was the one that went to him and was pestering him to let him play on the weekend. Um, it's interesting when you're at fullback because those metres you're talking about, they're metres with ball in hand. Mm. But at fullback, obviously, your metres are a lot more than that. Right. And you're running close to 10k a game as an outside back. So he would have clocked some metres up and understanding that would be the case. I'm sure Bellamy probably had a word in his ear that Every time you get the ball, they kick to you, try and look to pass, try and get someone else to get those high-speed high, high speed metres going. You know, I love that you're out there playing for us, but let's ease you back into it. As Blairy said, he wanted to take him off early but because of the situation and the scoreline. Mm. He had to keep him out there, you know, just because of the danger and didn't want to lose the game as well. But, yeah, good to have him back. Good to have him back. He, he's still got, a, I reckon, another couple of weeks of feeling his way through because of his injury history. One of those uh, someone else's that uh, took up those running metres was oh. Willie Warbrick. You said about him before. He got 192 metres for himself and then yeah. also, you know, the try, the two tries. So that's one of the best games I've seen from him. Yeah, well, back from injury. Um, again, point to prove because you want to be in the team. Um, I thought, you know, if, if you're... Ryan Pappenhausen and someone else is on fire, you feed him the ball, a little bit like basketball, you know what I mean? You give it to the person that's on fire. So he gave it to Will Warbrook most of the time, and every time he carried that ball, he was tough, he was hard to handle. He's a big body, he's got big high bumpers on him as well. He was enormous. I thought, you know, his game back, Mitch would be nearly close to best on ground, the way that he carried that ball back and what he could do, how he can go in the air, but also how he can score tries and... and you know, he got lucky off that bounce, but you've got to make your own lucky, put yourself in those positions, and he scores, gets the ball, scores some tries. So, yeah, solid solid effort from Will Warbrook on the back of it, coming back from his injuries. He's a great talent and strong carry of the ball, and a target in the air for sure, can jump. He's got that yeah. AFL-style jump eh? yeah, a couple yeah. of times in the back, boom, up there. <laughs> you got to remember that less than two years ago, he was still playing sevens, mm, rugby union, yeah. so he's, he's still relatively new to rugby league, and he had a great rookie year last year. He went to the right system. We've spoken how good it is for players to go and learn down in Melbourne. And obviously he learns a lot to get a spot in his first year going. But this year he's a lot, lot better. He's grown even still. He's got a better understanding of the concepts of where he needs to be and how to play wing. 
His timing is a lot better, but along with that, his work rate and his output is a lot better. He's uh, become a very, very quality, high-class winger. Knocking on the door for Kiwis, maybe? Yeah, definitely always in, always in the conversation. Um, anyone that's performing and consistently and um, playing well, there's always an opportunity for them to represent New Zealand. Um, you always look at those guys, and if you were to pick a, a winger right now, him and Ronaldo would be right up there with your two um, you know, wingers for, for New Zealand. Sweet as. Uh, we'll move on to the next game. The game you must be dreading, guys. <laughs> The Titans versus the Warriors uh, up on the Gold Coast. 66 to 6 oh. to the Titans. What happened? Hey, that one hurt, say, for the fans more than anything. And um, the bro and I were on uh, the big screens on yeah, right. <laughs> the big that's screens right. on Saturday uh, night, 5, uh, five o'clock. We were on there from 4.30 and we were, um, it's great to be working side Willie again. We, um, we're on the big screens again. Um, yeah, yeah I, don't think, I don't think I saw a more depressed duo oh. than you two at half <laughs> Really? You know, were you, you reckon we were depressed? Oh. Sad. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was a hard one, but there was no sugarcoating the performance of, of the Warriors. And I, I, I said that the other night, and um, this was hard to watch because if you look at the Warriors' performance against the, the Storm, defensively more than anything. Um, they went after the Melbourne Storm defensively. I thought they were, you know, stats all lent towards the Warriors. Unfortunately, they didn't win the, the, the game seven tries to four, but everything else was all Warriors. The kickoff comes and you just don't, you know, they got in the first, I guess, five minutes, they, they go in the corner, Marcelo Montoya misses a try. After that, it was, it was all the Gold Coast Titans. They, they had, there was a lack of energy. Um, you know, defensively, they were a fair way off where they'd been from the week before. A lot of one-on-one -on -one missed tackles, um, some soft inside tackles. Collectively as a group, I, I couldn't go through the team and name one player that was that played well. Uh, and I think the fans would have saw that. Uh, we saw that. Uh, it was hard to watch, hard to talk about. But they've got some work um, as a group, individuals. Confidence is a big thing in the game of rugby league. And you go from winning some really good games, you know, four weeks ago, you know, winning these games, Panthers, Dolphins, Cowboys, you know, teams that can attack, teams that are good, teams that can play well. And you come up against a Titans team that is sitting on the bottom. They should not be down, there, down on the bottom of the table anyway. They're a really quality side if you go through them, and uh, we just didn't turn up and perform. The Warriors didn't turn up and perform. Pre-match, I hope I wasn't uh, dejected because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was quite positive. I, yep. was, I was optimistic before the game, especially when we got the team sheets out and I saw the two forward packs and they'd put Chad Randall in and moved Darren Clark to prop. I thought, this is a pretty small pack for the Gold Coast Titans. This pack here that the Warriors got, with the exception of Egan and Dylan Walker, who are a little bit smaller, this is a lot bigger. This is a more yeah. powerful pack that's going to dominate through the middle part of the field and overpower this Gold Coast Titans pack. But that wasn't the case at all. And I said it in commentary. They went close with Marcelo Montoya early doors. He got taken in a tackle, lost the ball. It was a bit of an arm wrestle then for a little bit. It was... You just get the feeling it's about the first team to crack here. And unfortunately, when the Warriors kicked down and Roger couldn't take the bomb, it was taken by Brian Kelly. He goes the other end, then all the momentum just went to the Gold Coast Titans, stayed with the Titans, and the Warriors couldn't rescue it back. They were just out of, way off the pace physically. Mm. And some of their tackle technique was way off. Um, when they got the ball, their attention was poor. They were just beaten to the punch in every department by the by the Titans. And when you got a 33-year-old mm. and Kieran Foran running the show, coming up with big hits, forcing errors out of back rowers on the goal line, wanting to defend, Keanu Kinney picking holes throughout the defence of the Warriors. But then when it's called upon him coming up with some big D, now those, those two blokes were outstanding for the Titans. I, I just couldn't see anybody in the running at at the Warriors on the weekend. It was a tough, tough weekend. And my concern for them is, is how much this will hurt long term, how much this will hurt mm -hmm. going forward. Now they're talking about Sean Johnson possibly having a, a hamstring injury. 
um, out of this? Does that force Chanel to come back into the halves with Tamaiti? That may be a good thing. That may be a good thing for them. It's worked in the past. It's worked a couple of weeks ago. Why not give it another go? Mm -hmm. This may be something that the Warriors need to look at going forward um, is try and get, as I've alluded to already, this younger side that they've got and give some of these younger guys a prolonged run to be the team that takes them forward for the future. Four or five years ago, the Penrith Panthers did that. Mm. They took a hit for a little while, but they had a young team, a local team, boys from what they call the area, who were proud of who they were representing and who they were playing for and what they were representing when they played. It didn't come one year, but slowly but surely, they all took ownership of the team and now look at them. You know, a couple of grand finals, uh, grand final rings on their fingers, they're laughing. And maybe this is something the Warriors need to do. Put a young side together that they're going to have faith in that's going to be around for a little while and maybe something like what's happened at Penrith will come for the Warriors. Who knows? Because it's not quite clicking at the moment. Well, similar to that, that Broncos team that they have now, and yes, the Broncos haven't played well consistently this year, but a lot of those guys that they have now, they, they got wooden spoon a couple of years ago. So they took a hit then to develop these younger guys <coughs> for the reward of where they got to last year, the grand final. A lot of those guys come through a tough period. I think it was over the COVID time as well, 2020, 21, uh, where they got rid of a lot of their senior players around that squad and allowed these young guys to try and get them out of there, which in hindsight, you most probably would have wanted some older guys around there, but they've now hit the 70 game mark, 100 game mark, and they're better for the run. Sometimes, again, we always say you don't have that much time in rugby league because the game's based on results. And if you're not getting results, the pressure comes on. But if you stay true to what you you believe in, if, if the pathways is the future, which you would think it is, then you've got to put some trust in some of these younger guys that are coming through. Like you said, a couple of weeks ago, no one was questioning the team out on the field. Now, everyone would be asking for everyone to be dropped. But if you were to drop everyone, you wouldn't have a team on the weekend, would you? So they're going to have to find a way to dig themselves out of this. And like you said, it's, the confidence is going to be right down at the minute. And you chuck some, some young guys in there that haven't had a game this year, they'll lift that energy back up. But is it going to be good enough to be able to beat teams? We don't know. But at the moment, we're just looking a little bit slow on the weekend. Um, they didn't start fast at all. Um, and then they try to chase their tails and win the game back. Then penalties, six against, poor, dis uh, poor discipline, drop of balls, easy errors. People were dropping balls like they were going out of fashion out there. And they would be hard on themselves, yes, and they'll go look back over the, over the footage and be filthy that they lost this game. Um, because like both you and I said, and I said they have an international forward pack up against a, a group of kids, kids, uh, not known in, in grade yet, still racking up, you know, a handful of games, coming up against a quality side like the Warriors with the exp expectation from the outside going, hey, these guys should clean up the Gold Coast Titans. It doesn't matter who you got on your side. You've got to turn up with an attitude to yep. go after the opposition. And... They looked slow from the start. It, it just didn't work for them, and there were some, you know, some hard looks at themselves first and foremost individually, especially some of the senior players, because um, I think some of those senior players were some of the ones that missed a lot of those tackles. And then they've just got to figure out what's going to work best for them, whether they go back to the side that they had pre couple of weeks ago, um, or do they just tinker with a couple of positions? Roger Tuivasa-Shek, I don't think he's a centre. I don't no. think he's a centre. I just, you know, they've trialled him. They've given him opportunity. Yes, they had no ball on the weekend, but some of the decisions he made defensively most probably wasn't good enough for a centre right now. Um, are we just going to keep persisting with leaving him in there and keep trialling him? Or do we make a change? Chance, Nickel Klukstar can play centre, uh, but he came to the club as a fullback. They don't want to be moving people around, but there's opportunities there. They need to try and work out what's going to be best for the team, and I think it may be a chance to get him out of there and put Chance in there and put Roger to fullback. I don't know. Roger's too good to be playing and only having six touches a game. Yeah. Mm. And that's not enough of an output mm. from someone of that quality. And we've seen in moments this year, I'll go back to the Newcastle game, and I'm agreeing with Blair here, that when he played fullback... He absolutely tore them to bits. 
You know, you've got someone of that quality and that dangerous. I think you do. You know, you can be stubborn for so long, but if it's hurting you, you've got to make that that tough decision. Yeah. And I, I think you've, it's it's time to move them out. That experiment has run its course for me, of having having yeah. Roger in the centres. He's yeah, he's he, a, he just can't sit out there, um, Willie. He no, just can't. We're but, talking about yeah. players to give him the ball yeah. early, but it's not happening. Nah, mm. you know, on the weekend they didn't have enough ball to even give him the ball. No. You know what I mean? So to, to find yourself having six runs, he is a quality player, but needing the ball in hand more than what he's getting right now. And um, yes, they got a hiding on the scoreboard, but there was no opportunities for him anyway. They they were lacked lack confidence, lacked intent, and throughout their team just defensively made poor decisions. Um, he can't sit in the centre position and just expect us expect the boys to just go straight to him and give him some opportunities. You know, he's, he's best when he's at full back. He's got to get hands on ball. He's got to be touching the ball. We'll talk on the Titans a little bit because it was, for their side, obviously a great win. Huge. Uh, their biggest win ever. Uh, their previous biggest win was also against the Warriors. Back in 2021, they won 44 nil. Yeah, I remember that one. I wasn't playing, but <laughs> Matt Lodge walked off and poked the fingers to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't be remembering those moments, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You guys said about um, Kinney, oh. uh, Foran obviously being orchestrators. Uh, Campbell as well broke the record Duff. for the individual point scorer. 26 points with a try and 11 out of 11 from the tee. I mean, yeah, those guys, Olofiana, Camperera as well, oh, four, four tries. tries, shot himself right up to the top of the try scorer's uh, leaderboard. Yeah, All those guys, man, looked pretty good. And you were saying before the show... Kinney obviously has been crazy in his, especially recently, past four weeks. For, uh, not foreign, Brimson yep. is coming back in round 18. He's set to return. What do they do about that situation? Yeah, well, firstly, um, on on the um, Titans' performance, I mean, I think, you know, Fafita should be in these conversations as yeah. well. Like, yeah. the, the Titans build their momentum through... For feeder, uh, who was running at Sean Johnson, uh, we seen what Fafita can do. He's hard to stop on a, on any day, no matter who you are. It doesn't mean if you're Sean Johnson or someone else, Adam Fanu or Blake. He's still hard to handle. I think he clocked up two hundred and something meters as well, um, because they built that momentum through Sean, obviously, and then the momentum through the middle of the park allowed the guys like Jaden Campbell and Keanu Kinney and also Karen Foreman to play the way that they did. Um, when you've got a 33-year-old taking the line or taking the ball to the line and engaging defenders and making defenders make decisions, it helps with someone like Keanu Kinney with his speed and his athleticism to be able to score these points. Obviously, they, they worked through the middle, built some momentum through some of these soft tackles that they had in the middle of the park. They would have found, they would have, they identified that Wade Egan's, if you keep getting at Wade Egan, you can build momentum there. You try and get him back into tackles, go away, come back. But if you if you hit the middle, you go away and you go to Sean Johnson like they did, then you come back to the middle, then the opportunity is back on over again. So I think that's what they, they did really well to build momentum through those two guys, but also then you know, allowed these these guys to come through. Jaden Campbell, left foot sharp. I think, you know, um, Isaac Liu came through, right foot straight through um, straight through Wade Egan and, and at the time straight through the middle. So they created these opportunities because they were in, had intent and these guys played the best football when there's space. Uh, you know, Lofi with his tries, enormous, four tries. Like, there was no way they were catching him when he was getting runs. Like, this guy was on. You know, I think when AJ Brimson comes back, I, like... I think he's like again, like you talk, if you talk about the Warriors, they 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 slot him straight back into the team. It's like a Sean Johnson, they slot him back into the team until it doesn't work, and then you make a decision on where you're going to find someone like Keanu Kinney. Like he could go to any club and fall straight into their fullback position. You've got to find a position for him on the field, and I think his best position is fullback. He's not a 14. I think he can come on from and play the fullback role really good. And we've seen over the last six weeks what he's done for them. I thought he had a real good game against the Tigers as well. Um, he's electric. He can break tackles. He's a smaller, yeah. smaller fullback, but speed, speed to burn. So a tough decision for the Gold Coast Titans uh, when AJ Brimson comes back because I think he's a good player as well. Like they've got some quality outside backs, I think. And when they're when they're on on their day, this is what they can do. Yeah, we've spoken about Alofi Carpereira. 
quite a bit this year, especially in those moments with, that have baffled me when Desi Hasler's dropped him because every time he's played, he's pretty much scored a try, hence why he's at the top now. And you know, the four tries on the weekend have helped get him up there, and they were well taken. But geez, he's a finisher and a half. He's got some pace and power, and he's dangerous on that left edge. You know, where Fafita plies his trade. I would have would have been interesting. I would have loved to see. Because he got in some semi-open space, David Fafita and Roger just got him enough mm. to get the ankle tap. Had he kept running, I would have liked to see him in the open space with just uh, just chance to beat. But yeah, he's he's dangerous. Those, as I mentioned before, I didn't see their pack at all overpowering what the Warriors had. But it was just their enthusiasm, their speed, and their will to play quick that got them all those opportunities. And they got they played that fast over the advantage line that Isaac Liu was able to make that break or the Warriors' defence was scrambling and they're over-chasing and defenders moving out too wide that they're able to just step and that's how uh, Jaden Campbell was able to get that step and then an offload for uh, Palacia to score. So, yeah, it causes so many mix-ups and so many errors in your defensive line when you're not able to get your contact right. But they were just more enthusiastic, the Titans, and... Uh, some of Jaden Campbell's kicking, he was kicking them from all over the place, but every single one of them was black dot. It was straight through the middle. didn't even look like missing. He's on fire. 26 mm. points. We spoke about uh, Zach Lomax a couple of weeks ago getting mm. 10 for 10, but yeah. 11 from 11, 26-point haul for the game. Yeah, big one. He Talking about AJ Brimson coming back, uh, he can't take that sixth spot. I think he's found his spot there as a ball player and supporting Kieran Foran. Mm. As we've said, Kieran Foran, I'll play on the ball. And you just play mm. when you need to. I'll feed you and you just chime in when you have to. A bit like what Penrith do with Cleary and Luai. And uh, he's, a, he's a good foil for him, so keep him there. Yeah, Keanu there, I I don't see why uh, Brimson couldn't be a 14 for them. I know he's on a big deal ooh, and it's a big call, ooh, but ooh, I don't see why he couldn't be a 14. Well, he'd, he'd be the prime 14 because he can play all over the park, yeah. hey? You can get, yeah. chuck him into hooker. You can chuck him into the front line. He's defended in the front line. Then you can chuck him into the into the. I think he's more of a fourteen than Keanu Kinney would be because I think Keanu Kinney only covers yeah. the fullback. So yeah, he could go there. But yeah, massive effort from the Gold Coast Titans. Man, just created pressure and stress on the Warriors, and hence why they got the result. What did you guys think of the uh, sin bin on Roger? Yeah, no, nah, most for me, most of not a not a, a sin bin. <sighs> yeah. Um, he got him past the horizontal, but there was wasn't that far past the horizontal. So I think a penalty was sufficient. Hence why he only got a fine for it. Uh, even that's much really not even worth the fine, to be honest. Yeah, on report for me. Just put him on report. He landed on his back. Yeah. The ball carrier got up. He was fine straight away. He got him in that position, which was enough for a penalty. And then we'll have a look at it after. I thought the reaction was a bit much to mm. give him ten minutes in the bin. Wasn't costly to the Warriors at the end of the no. game, but yeah, the decision was the wrong one for me. All right, next game up: Roosters before, versus the Bulldogs. Uh, before we go there, can I um, can I press you guys for? You've already talked about Chance potentially making the shift as one of the changes. What other changes do you think you'd like to see for for the Warriors? Um, is SJ's injury? an opportunity for one of the young guys to, to step in and then potentially just take that role? Yeah, I, I think definitely if, he, if he's injured and he's not going to be right, I think you go back to the, the Chanel and the Tamati combination. Um, I think you've got to, you know, the difference, and I, I think when it comes to Tohu and Dylan Walker, Dylan Walker's not a back row. He can cover a lot of positions. Back row is a really hard position to be able to defend. Uh, you've got big guys coming at you. So I think he's more of a uh, utility 14 or a, or a lock. And I think we've seen when Dylan Walker, the difference between Dylan Walker and Tohu Harris is the leg speed of what he plays at. Um, Tohu Harris has got a nice slider hand, um, normally chooses the right option most times, nine, out, nine times out of ten. But what I like about Dylan Walker is that is he gets over the ad line real quick and then holds defensive the, the defensive line up because he's come at them really quick and before they know it, he's there in their face. So he's got the option to either run, play short, or play at the back. So that that for me is, is, is something where I think they should have a look at. A lot of our leaders and our experienced players are a lot older. 
So we speak about the game moving really quick and these young guys coming in. There, there, there's an example right there. Our guys, our guys through the middle of the park, some of our leaders are a little bit older and these guys with faster leg speed uh, are the ones that are making and creating most of the momentum through the, through the NRL. So if I'm thinking of just a little subtle change and maybe going back to that 13 that played, uh, you know, the, the Panthers and the Dolphins, mm -hmm. bar the guys that are injured, and trying to recreate something like that where they really just go back down to the basics, which they would have had to when they played those games because a lot of the experience was on the sideline. Really going back down to the basics, double downing on your defensive systems, double downing on your simple attack, um, and playing and then going back to enjoying football because they'll be on a, on a big downer this week yep. with the performance that they had. They'll be looking at themselves with a magnifying glass individually and saying, where did I go wrong? So I think if you if you think about a subtle change, it'd be say you bring your halves back in if Sean's out, you have a subtle change through that lock position. Yes, you lead you lose a lot of the leadership of Tohu Harris, but I think they've had a lot of leadership issues before these guys come back into the team with been, a lot of them being on the sidelines. Um, you move, say, Chance to a centre position because he's played at an international level. Um, Roger needs to get hands on the ball. He may, may move him to the fullback position. And then you're just tinkering with some of these younger middles. I think if you've got a back row missing, they're going to get the boys back from... from you're going to get Mitch Barnett back. Yep. You're going to get Kurt Catewell back as well. So Barney goes back to the back row you got Marats in the back row, and our middles need to start bleeding these young guys through, I think, is you got them on your bench. Let's start giving them, put some trust in them that they're going to get a job done. Hence what they did in the Penrith game. You know, Tom Ali was on early in the game. They had a nice little strong rotation. They were they were confident. They backed them. They left them out there. Hence why they left Adam Fanua Blake off the field and why he, he got a little bit angry that day that he, he was off the field for so long because these young guys came on and got a job done. So... Subtle changes, not big changes, I think. And it's more around the game style that they want to play. I think the way that they want to play, if we're playing fast and direct, then you need guys with a bit of leg speed. Tom Ali's got leg speed. Yep. You know, Jacob Laban can get some leg speed for you. Dylan Walker can do that. So I think if we look into that side of the game, I think those could be some subtle changes. Yeah, I think the halfback, if, if Sean's injured, will be a good combination. Mm. They've shown that they can work together, Chanel and, and Samaiti. Um, we've already spoken about Roger back to fullback, and that would be a big call and a big change, mm. but they've got to do it at some point before it gets too late. Yeah. And then uh, I agree, some of the younger middles, I'd like, uh, I think Dylan Walker's better in the middle. His leg speed yep. through the middle mm. would be best. And... Yeah, he's been good off the bench, but I think Tohu was better off the bench last week than starting this yeah. week. So if they just put, play him off the bench, I know he's your captain, he can still lead through the yeah. week. But Dylan Walker start, and then, as you said, those two representative players come back from origin duty. So that's Dylan Walker's spot covered with Barney playing on the left. Capewell comes back. He may be off the bench as well or mm. start on the right side. Who knows? But... I'd go with someone like uh, Tom Ali or or Zion. Z uh, Zion's injured at the moment, uh, so so. But there is some young kids yeah. knocking on the door down in New South Wales Cup. The Matrix uh, Sefikola, he's just coming back from his game. I think he's two, three games into his thing, so he's an opportunity there for for someone like him. I know he's already played great before. He's got um. Big expectations, big reps on him. Um, he's an impact player that can come either side of the half. Um, so there is some guys knocking on the That's door right. down there. And the New South Wales Cup team is doing really well. They're sitting, they're, really sitting, well. they're sitting fifth on the table with the amount of injuries that they've had at the top and losing a lot of these guys in that New South Wales Cup team because they've got to go up. They've managed to still find themselves in, in the top five in that competition. And a lot of these guys are playing down there. A lot of the kids coming through the pathway. So they've been given opportunities not because that they've, again, when you talk about these guys coming up, it's because they perform really well down there. It's because there's no one else to go come up. So they bring these kids in. Now they're getting opportunities. Now they're getting reps in, which then helps the team, which then helps the NRL team, which then these guys are knocking on doors. So there's plenty of guys down there. Are they ready? Most probably not. But there's a couple of guys that most probably get out there and get a job done for you. And if you need them either side of, of half time, then they'll get a job done. We go back to the Penrith game for the Warriors. Those changes were forced. Yeah. 
They were in forced changes because of so many injuries and people kept going. But what it uncovered was these kids are capable. Mm. They're capable of doing it again. And that knock-on effect has happened down to reserve grade. But now you've got an opportunity where it's not unforced. You may have to show some bravery and make a decision that, you know, to take a gamble and give these young kids a crack. Well, they're sitting at 13th spot, Willie, and, um, and the season's sh- you know, it's, away. You know, we spoke about is this a must win, and we didn't say it was a must win, but it, a win that they needed. Like the next two games, you know, the next game they can't afford to drop. They can't afford to drop the competition. The top eight is slipping away. I think it's 18. I think the the eighth team is on. They're on 15 points, but teams below them, South Sydney, South for Sydney example, 14. Titans, They're on Tigers. 14. Titans, Tigers. So. You know what I mean? Like they can't afford to drop a game now because the competition's moving really quickly. So if it's not now, it's when. And again, if you're planning and what the end of the year looks like, it's like, uh, do we want to be competing for the eight or are we happy just to sit where we are? So it may be time to have a look at some of the changes, uh, whether it's subtle changes or big ones, like something has to happen. Man. Always a pleasure hearing you guys talk about the Warriors, isn't it? I'm sure our fans are all loving that as uh, it's our most popular segment by yeah. far. Also, shout out to um, all the Warriors fans who turned up at the Gold Coast. Oh, oh yeah. Guys, but you guys, but awesome. did, did you hear the Boeing? The, bo- the Boeing for the Gold Coast Titans, not the Warriors, the Boeing for the Gold Coast Titans. <laughs> which, which then, you know, and I, I speak to a few people at the Gold Coast, um, and they mark this game on the calendar, the home game, because they know it's going to be a sold out, sold out stadium. Because a lot of Kiwis live on the Gold Coast or live in Queensland, Queensland. So they mark this down as a game of they know it's going to be big, so we're going to go out there and perform. And then you run out and you get booed by the fans. <laughs> You're like, hold on a minute, we're um, we're on the Gold Coast. It's our home game, but it adds to the spice of the game. And then you get the result like that. Mate, how good, awesome to those fans that turn up. Um, obviously, they'll be disappointed, but I uh, appreciate all the support, man. How good. Next week is a cracking sellout as well. Broncos we again. coming to Mount Smart to, to play. Big week big week ahead for the Warriors to get themselves dusted off, get prepared again, and that's the beauty of rugby league. You get a week to dust it all off. We said it before, when they hadn't won a game for about four or five weeks, you could forget about it, and they did. After they won those three games, they were able to forget about that. They get on a run again, that'll happen again. Mm. All right, next game, Roosters v Bulldogs uh, at Industry Group Stadium. Uh, 26-8 to the Roosters. There was a, a controversial, or not controversial, but there was the big hit. I didn't actually watch this game, Ooh, I'll be honest, because hit. I was at the Blues uh, Super Rugby game. Up the Blues. Up the Blues. <laughs> but all of the Blues, any Blues, yeah. up the Blues. Uh, Your but, Blues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... You guys can uh, tell me about the game. Yeah, um, yes, this would have been a, a bit of a mixed bag of a game because both teams, you know, lose, um, especially the Bulldogs, I think, for example, they're losing their, their captain who's been, I guess, their best player on the ground and you have to rely on some of the other players again. I think the Roosters played a real tough game. Um, you know, they went after the, the Bulldogs. William Kikau, you know, Jared Wadia Hargis was going after him most of the game. Uh, Terrell May, enormous, um, 80 minutes in the front row. Someone go test that fella, bro. <laughs> you can't. You can't. But I know Jared, when Jared first come through the, the Roosters, I think he was playing 80 minutes. And the, the Roosters do it really well. I think they, they bleed these young guys through and then they push them. But I guess they understand the players that they are. Um, he's been busy the last few few weeks, Terrell May, and been able to be one of their best performers on the field for you know an older player. But getting the job done, he's been awesome. So this game was... Uh, you know, like you said, there's a bit of controversy in there. It wasn't controversial. The, the big hit, mean, awesome, young fella, got in there, got stuck in, scored a nice try as well down mm-hmm. the sideline. So that was huge. And then obviously Ponga gets um, gets the old red card off the field. That was dangerous. He yeah, didn't look, didn't like the look of that tackle. Um, got beaten. I think he was right foot. Beat him on the on the inside shoulder. Stuck his hand out. Knocked him straight out. Um, you know, these, these guys with speed, these guys with speed are challenging the defensive life every time they run the ball. And if you don't get your technique right, um, this is what happens. So he'll be spending some side on the, some time on the sidelines, I think. But, you know, Sam Walker, enormous. He's been a big part of the Roosters uh, team since he's been back playing really well. 
you know, his kicking game, he's tough for a little fella, his passing game, his options he chooses, he's everything and everywhere on the team. Yeah, he was he was dominant, Sam Walker, and he has these games. He has these games where he really steps up and he takes control through his kicking game, through his running game. He's a, he's a very smart footballer. He was kicking off both left and right, mm. set up tries on both feet, and they took advantage. It was real happy for Terrell May to score a try off one of those kicks, you know, reward for the effort he's put in uh, the last couple of weeks, but especially that game to play 80 minutes as a front rower and the output that he got, 241 metres, was it? Mm, 214. 214 metres. Oh, big effort. Big effort and a willing ball carrier. And mm. The guys like Sam Walker and Luke Carey, they play off the back of that. They love that. So they just keep feeding them. Uh, Jarrell Skelton was enormous. A real danger man for me. I saw him on the, on the wing, a big fella running down yeah. the sideline. It was exciting. It was dangerous. He come up with that big shot. Perfect technique, bro. Perfect, Perfect technique. That's that, that's how you come in off your sideline and make a tackle. St- hit under the ball, stuck all the way down to the ground, finish on top. Like you can't get it wrong. That's it. And you know, he stayed up a little bit, but he still his target was low. His target was to go low and get his shoulder. And dogs, <sighs> strange putting Burton into the centres to start the game. I, I didn't get it. You know, I know they're missing a couple, but leave him there. Let him run your side like he has been. He's 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 one of those players too. He's got to touch the ball as much as he can, yep. whether that's kicking, passing, running. Keep that threat. Keep him in there. But they're they're there or thereabouts. The dogs. They're not too far off, and I think they're tracking nicely for how they want their season to be. I have them in the eight at the end of the season. How they've gone, they'll pick up some more wins. They've just got to take the learnings out of these losses and, uh, you know, understand that Crichton's going to come back into the side. He'll come back and he'll make their side a lot better. Then they'll, they'll hopefully get Addo Carr back at some point and then they'll have their full complement of dangerous players to get them over the line and finish the season strongly. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask about Gerald Skelton. Obviously, he's having to bide his time. That was only his first game of the season. I think he had four or five games last season that he was able to play. But... He's only managed to get in from injury to Ado uh, Was it injury to Bronson Cherry or yep. so, yeah, injury to him as well? And then Crichton out, so they're in need of outside backs. And that was the only way he was able to get his chance in the game. And but man, he looked great from the highlights. Like well, the highlights are stacked full with him. Yeah, he, he made himself present. You know, he made himself present. Felt on the field um, with that hit, and then he was dominant with his carries. He carried strong. He's a big body. Um, and then scored some, scored a great try. So, you know, he's back in there. And like every, like everyone, um, you're one injury away from an opportunity. And here's his opportunity. Now it's time to make the most of it. As a player in reserve grade, you've got to understand you've got to bide your time. What you're doing is you're banking up trust level mm-hmm. with the coaching staff and through your consistent performances. And your opportunity may come through someone's form dropping and if your form is worthy enough then the coach will give you a shot or there's an injury then you get your shot either way when you do get that shot you've got to make it count because it could be your one and only if you if you don't make it he's given himself given himself an opportunity to get another one that's no guarantee because he hasn't got the credit at that level yet and the other guys may come back you know and, and push him straight down but at least the coaching staff know that when he's called upon, keep building that trust that reserve grade. When you play, we know you've got that type of performance in you, especially if it comes to a playoff and they lose a winger. Hey, we've got no no question about putting you in. We'll put you in straight away. One more thing on Terrell May. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said on the show that <laughs> he was the, or my pick of the most informed of the Roosters front row. I reckon he was, you know, up there, even maybe better than. Lindsay Collins this season, this season, and now all of a sudden I'm starting to hear whispers that are uh, on uh, some of the other TV shows that they want him uh, to be in the Blues Origin for next season. So yeah. maybe they've been watching this because they're listening mate. to old Ephraim's opinion. <laughs> maybe listening to you, I mate. Mean, he's he's got all the qualities right now uh, to be able to give himself a chance for next year. And hey, something something miraculous might happen now. 
and he maybe in, in game three, you just never know. With his it's with a, the with what he's been able to create in such a short time, his consistency with his performances, his way he carries the ball, the hard to handle, his offloads that he can create as well. Like you can build momentum off the back of someone like this. He's a tall, big body, different body shape to a lot of their middles um, in the Origin Arena right now. Um, so he, he could be a chance, and if he keeps playing the way he is, what what's saying he doesn't play game three? Yeah. Who knows? Uh, next game, <laughs> Rabbitohs v Sea Eagles, <laughs> fourteen nil to the Rabbitohs. Uh, first time since. 1947 wow. that they've uh, the Rabbitohs have held manly scoreless and it was uh, their fourth straight victory so obviously like the Rabbitohs are back man they yeah I think they've built some confidence in their performances of late and and still having you know the trail's not there um, but being able to get some big performance like Keon Kalau Matangi uh, Jai Gray those guys. Um, you know, they, they were quality. I think the move, and we've spoken about it, and I think it's been the last three weeks you've spoken about, South, is Keon has moved from back row to where he has been, been able to be nice and strong with his carry, 250 metres in the middle of the park. Like, so used to playing out wide, but coming into the middle, getting the work done, getting the job done, and then having Jai Gray at the back of of Cody Walker and the way he's been able to play nice and direct, leading the boys around the park. But, mate, those, those boys have found, I guess, a, a simple formula that works for what they have in their team. Uh, and then they've been able to get that, get the job done. Um, to be, p- beat the Eagles, yes, they were down on men, but, you know, you take the win. It doesn't matter who's on the field. you still got to turn up and perform to the best you can. And, you know, a 14-0 win, you, you take that any time of the week because it's two points at the end of the day. Yeah, you've got to play what's in front of you. And that's what South Sydney did. And there, he's made some big calls. Ben Hornby as as the interim coach, and I'm not sure if some of those have been uh, little whispers from the coach to be, <laughs> um, you know, or whether he's just let him run run the side and, and have his have his say on what he's doing this year. But he's made some big calls, and we spoke about it. Probably the best call he's made is in the halves. Put Jack White mm. in there. Mm. Now on that, for me, I've got to say that. Cody Walker has uh, stood out for me to be so unselfish in that move. He's been dominant on that left edge for so long for the Rabbitohs. And for him to say, all right, I'll move to the right to accommodate Jack Whiten for the good of our team, Mm. which has played out perfectly. And he said it. He's got so much to learn on the right side and he's learning on the run every single week and getting better. But for him to make that sacrifice and make that change when he could have just said, no, you put Jack Wyden on the right. But for the good of the side, he's made that that call and agreed with the coach and it's worked out perfectly. Jack Wyden running with the ball, his running threat, mm. set up the first try. He took the line on and because he's so dangerous near the try line, it drew in so many defenders and Jai Gray scores that first mm. try on the edge. Jai Gray is going to be a wonderful player. But again... The trail comes back, he'll get his spot back, but he's got to go back and keep biding his time, just like we're saying there with the other younger fellas. You know, you've, you've got to enjoy the moments that you get, make the most of it, yeah. as in the NRL, in the, in the big show, and then go back when you have to. Don't spit your dummy out. You know, be composed about understand that's the situation you're in, and then when you get your chance again, because at some point in time, they may very well do move the trail to centre mm. to accommodate mm. Jai Gray. But not at this moment in time, not the way Latrell's playing at fullback. But yes, South Sydney, four in a row, climbing. They're a dangerous threat to those sides just above them on the table. A real, real threat. Uh, Damien Cook, obviously, that news seems to have maybe sparked something in him because Holy has, looking at the stats from from the game, 100 metres run, two try assists, eight tackle breaks, 44 tackles. Yeah, oh, man. Well, that's when he's at his best day, eh? and I'm guessing they've all built some confidence in their last few performances. And this is what it can do: it brings the best out of those players when they're going through some tough times. Is that this, when they're playing well, 
these guys start playing some football. Uh, yeah, we obviously spoken, everyone would have spoken about, you know, Jack White and moving into the halves. It was just a matter of time. They just had to see itself, Sydney, that he needed to be in the halves closer to the ball, on the ball, hands in. Uh, and then Latrell Mitchell just getting himself mentally sorted away from rugby league. He's come back and they've all done what they did. So, you know, as well as, you know, Cody Walker, you know, not being selfish, you know, Jack Wyden's in there. Latrell Mitchell's more for the team. Now helps Damien Cook play the way that they need to. Keon, 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 Keon Matangi <laughs> being the best player that he has been for a long time, bringing back some of the form that he was playing in the back row, but yep. now in the middle of the park. So between those guys, which are who we just named, all their leaders, all their senior players, they are playing their best footy, which then allows someone like Jai Gray to come in there and just do his job. So a great change of mindset, change of attitude, change of way of thinking for the, for the, for the uh, South Sydney Rebels team. Yeah, we spoke about Latrell a couple of weeks ago. Just been happy. They all seem happy now. They all seem to be enjoying themselves. Jeez, it makes a difference. Yeah, that's, I guess, what happens in, in a month, eh? A month of winning and all of a sudden mm. none of that stuff matters from before. They're massive losing streak. That no one even cares about that anymore. No. With, uh, the, um, with Kalo Matangi doing so well in the middle there, what does it mean when Murray starts coming back into the fold for him? Does he just move to the front? Does he stay at thirteen? Oh, I just think no, I think he stays in the front. Like, yeah. like you don't move someone that's playing so well and is being confident. Like your thirteen ball is more of a ball playing, so it doesn't really change too much. Like, just it just really, I guess it narrow, narrows down his focus. I mean, he's more of a ball carrier than a ball player. But you add, you know, Murray into the mix as well, yeah. then it only strengthens the pack. So. You know, great, great change up, I think. How'd they do it last week? I think last oh. week was Murray's first game back. I think he came off the bench yep. into lock, and then that's when Keon yep. went to back. So it's a great way of doing things. If you can start him in the middle, you move him out to the edge, and if you need to rotate him back yeah. through, like you're giving him that rest, you're still getting big minutes out of him, you're still getting big um, meters, running meters, and then you get him out on the edge, gets a gets a few rests out there, minutes out there, and then back through. You can rotate him around like that with, with your benches and stuff like that. Yeah, I think you rotate Mawali and yeah. And Burgess, but he starts for me with, with Cam Murray coming straight back. And plays, most probably plays the whole game because he can go from the middle for the first 20, 25, go That's back the out edge. to the edge yep. and then rotate him that way. From a manly side, obviously down quite a few troops, three origin boys, uh, you know, Turbo is yep. out, Garrick was out uh, from his HIA. So, you know, not necessarily their top side that is all there. Uh, to take this zero pointer that they achieved, obviously Turbo is meant to be coming back. They have a bye next week, but then round eighteen, Turbo is meant to be coming back. The chat is going to get a lot louder of if he's going to come back at fullback, going to come back at centre. What do you guys think? Oh, I think we sit, might have said it last week. I think he's. Week. I think he's. I think he's got to go back into the centre. I think we've, they've got to try and keep him on the field more than keep him on the sidelines. And if it means moving someone out of the, the position that he is, you, you make way for for him because uh, what he can do if the ball is damaging. So I think if you lessen up his case by putting him in there, um, then he's on the field, you've got your strength back. And again, on their performance, I think, you know, when you're losing someone like Cherry Evans, who I said is most probably, if not just behind um, Jerome Hughes at the moment with best seven in the comp right now, it's really hard to get a direction around the field of park, and then you got uh, Hamoli, who's, you know, a threat on the edges. Losing him as well is, is tough. But yeah, you find room for uh, Turbo, and you put him in the team, and I think you put him in the centres. Yeah, they're they're a side that need all their strike players on. You know, unfortunately, their strike players are involved in Origin, or the Turbo is injured. So when you get them back and fit and available and ready for selection, you play them all. You play them on, you've got to find a space. And for his longevity, for his career longevity, yeah, as we said last week, you've got to, I think you've got to put Turbo in the front line. Or you or you manage him like Bellamy did with uh, Pappenhausen last week and pretty much say, hey, minimise those high metres, high speed running metres and pass the ball and play. Don't get your hands on the ball too much until you're in an area where you, you support running, but... That takes him out of the play. You put him in the front line, play him at centre, get the ball in his hands, let him be dangerous, and then you get the young Hopewadi at fullback, who's been great there. 
Mm. Sweet as. On to the last game of the week, the Sunday game, Tigers versus the Raiders. 48-24 to the Tigers. Ooh. Oh, my God, they're fixed. All the troubles are gone. The Tigers. It's a miracle. No, nah, but they did put in. <laughs> they did put in a great performance. Uh, obviously, you know Adam Dewey back. Lachlan Galvin getting his first ah. and his second try. Yeah. Uh, Arpi doing well. They just everything was clicking for them. They 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 played a exciting brand of football um, with a lot of enthusiasm from a lot of the young kids coming into the squad. Um, you know they were tough when they carried the ball. They were hard to handle. Um, and then on the back of, you know, I guess a lot of the media push from Lachlan Galvin and whether he's going to stay at the club or whether he's going to go um, as agent stuff, the the media over in Australia, he comes and puts in a performance like he did. He was class um, 180 metres, 81 metres for a, for a six. It's, it's crazy. Um, he's obviously doing a lot more running. But everything they did yesterday was like, you know, it just turned into, into gold, like the kicks, you know, I mean, there was a try that Uppy scored. You know, Galvin has all the time in the world and just puts a kick in. The bounce bounces up perfectly for the boys. They grab it, they score a try. And you know, just some things like that, they just come off for them on the day. Um, you know, the Raiders weren't at their best. Um, they tried. They looked like they are trying too hard. Our good old mate, John Rapana, again, tries really hard. Sometimes there's a lot of errors around him. Um, they were lucky to score the tries that they did. They went down to a one man. Uh, a guy got sent for 10 minutes, and that's when they scored their three tries or four tries. They needed to at least score six to try and get the game away from. But exciting for, for the Tigers. Um, you know, they're working hard together as a young group. And again, to get a win like this at Campbelltown, they're both Leichhardt and Campbelltown seems to be working for them. And I think it was the last time they beat Raiders, 2014. That's when I was rolling down there. So a <laughs> uh, long time ago, I am a dinosaur when it comes to rugby <laughs> league. Um, so that's a long time ago that they've beaten them. But to be able to beat them in Campbelltown in front of their home fans, you know, and being able to do what they did, Bulla, oh, Bulla brother. He was, <laughs> he was, he was actually on. You know, what I mean, they were they were good. They were they were solid. They'd be happy with their performance. The the, the thing for me now is how they back that up. Uh, you can't just have a game like this, and they've had two wins in a row now. Beat the Titans. Be nice to see if they can get three in a row and go after the next team. There's a dinosaur. I'm a fossil. <laughs> <laughs> <There's>. <laughs> um, I've been critical um, previously that the Tigers look very individual. They didn't look like a team beforehand. But the last two weeks, it's amazing what confidence can do. They've looked so much like a team now, especially on the weekend. They were tackling in numbers. They were covering each other. They were turning up. When someone was making a defensive error, there was his mate there covering up and working hard for each other. When they were making breaks, they were supporting each other. That's how Uppy scored his try because he was chasing Galvin's kick really, really hard. They're looking like a team again. Hence, they're getting the rewards. And sometimes in rugby league, in any sport, timing's a big one. And you know the opposition you face, you've got to get them at a good time. But like South Sydney got Manly at a good time this weekend without their strike players. Mm -hmm. But you, they've got a Canberra team that are really, really down. They're really down at the moment. We spoke about their home record and how many points they've conceded. But defensively, they were very similar to the Warriors. Mm. Uh, some of their contact was poor. Some of their efforts to work hard and get into spaces was non-existent. And uh, Lockie Galvin took his try really, really well. Just poor defence. Great attack, great speed, great agility. But, yeah, the, you can understand why Ricky Stewart came out and was really disappointed with their performance and slated his team. He's, they're in a real hole at the moment. They were in the eight, but they could be slipping away. But for the Tigers, they've got themselves off the bottom of the table, and it's crazy, crazy to think that yep. power are the bottom team now. And they had a buy, and they got the two points and still found themselves still on the bottom. Of the bottom. <laughs> so those power fans, unlucky. Was... Unlucky. Yeah, the Tigers have turned things around. And we'll see if uh, the danger is when you win like that, it yep. papers over all the other stuff. But they're still festering away in the background. Yeah. And hopefully they're fixing those up. It just keeps the reporters and the media at bay and, and the negative supporters. And hopefully they fix it up and get get everything sailing in the right line. So 
they're good on the field as well as off the field. Yeah, they needed to, they needed to be stronger defensively when they went a man down. So they, those those points that they scored in there, if they're a, a strong defensive team, they would, shouldn't have let those well, let three tries Agreed. in anyway. Uh, one try you may let let it go, but three tries. Um, so again, they've still got a lot to work on defensively. We said that you said that they they work better together. Yes, they were so much better together. But in those moments of tough times, yep. that's when you find the dif- what's the difference between the team that they were, you know. Two weeks ago to where they are today. Um, again, you can't let those three tries come in. You've got to try and minimise that. That because I know teams want to play and attack you in those spaces. I think they were just going after them. The Canberra Raiders had nothing to, to lose. They were playing some football, but if you work together as a group like they did earlier with the 30 men on the field, they should be able to be more, more have more resilience in yeah. those moments. Sure. So they've got to be more resilient as a as a group. Yeah. Um- Adam Dewey in his return. We talked about Pappenhausen and Turbo before with the less meters thing. He definitely did not run less meters. He ran 212 meters, obviously contribute to from his uh, intercept try that he pulled off. <sighs> Go kid. Kyle Weeks. And I know Kyle Weeks Kyle is pretty Weeks. fast. Yep. Yep. But he, yeah, he had no bloody breaks put on him. He just came back in, got the try, 212 meters, five tackle breaks, and he was the man for them also kicking as well adding I guess a different dimension to what they already have in the halves um, and then yeah Coruscant 20 points excuse me bro sorry <laughs> <laughs> just had a sneeze sorry bro far no, that's all right, how rude bro. of me I couldn't hold that one in it that's was a totally sneeze right. so. uh, and then also you said about the young guys uh, earlier yeah so Luke Laulili yep debuted scored his first try and then Sione Fainu, brother of yep. obviously yep. the other two, also scored his first NRL try. And then Galvin scored yeah. his first and second. So He got disallowed the first try. I think he was held up over the line then scored the second yeah. time. You weren't going to stop him the second time. He, he picked him out, ran straight over the top of him, scored a nice try. Um, that was over the hooker. Come off the bench. Uh, bloody sorry. Oh, no, sorry. Le- my Levi. 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 Danny Levi. You know, up he crosses out, goes left, shows left. Really smart deception play. He goes left, boom, picks out a picks out a smaller defender and sends him straight over top. And what a great try! It's great work that Up he's doing around the middle of the park. He's got some big bodies to, to use up, which is good. Um, they just got to be more resilient around defence. That's all. I think the attacks all there. They've got players that can score tries. They've got attack all over the park. Resilience and defence is going to be their their key that they need to keep pushing real hard. Yeah, big funnel with Tukumanu. I mean, he's got the bit between his teeth. He's got, taken his angry pills the last couple of weeks. <laughs> his try was awesome. You know, he took three players over, busted them apart and took the try. He's been uh, a real fresh, a breath of fresh air for them. Still got to wait and see what he's going to do. You know, he's a, the Tigers will be wanting to tie him down. Yeah. And he's got to sort his off-field stuff so he can just focus on repeating those sort of performances. And Samuel Ofainu as well. Man, that dude boys. looks like the man. Now, now he was. I remember when he was first got that starting role early in the season. He kept cramping every <laughs> like it would get to like fifty minutes, and he's just cramping. And sometimes he had to sub off because he couldn't hack yeah, it. But yeah. now he's playing eighty minutes solid and looking he's like good. the man. He's a strike on this side. Strike. All right, so that was all the games. So we can now move on to our origin preview for the. Well, we'll start off just quickly touch on the women's third game first ever third game is going to be on thursday uh 9 45 new zealand time yeah 7 45 australian time it's a decider yeah it's uh up in queensland yeah. country bank stadium what do you guys think is going to happen with that yeah well this is a hard one to choose because uh, i think the new south wales women team has a, a, a better squad on paper uh, but that doesn't mean anything when it comes to the game um, I'd love to see the Queensland girls get this one. I think um, they have played tough because they've had to. They haven't played the best games, but if you go off their last performance, it was a, a tough performance from the Queensland girls. They needed to win that one no matter what anyway. It's just great that it's gone to three games um, because, you know, you finish on two and it's one all and there's no actually winner, no decider, you know what I mean? So they've been able to win one each and have to go up to a, a country bank stadium uh, in Queensland and try and get a get a win on uh, on in their home grounds, uh, the Queenslanders, and then the New South Wales women have to come up there and try and get a win off them. So 
be a good game. I reckon another close one. If not a close one, Mishra would be a blowout. Yeah, over the course of the two games, New South Wales have been the better side. Uh, Queensland snuck away with it in the second game, got the drop goal to win at 11-10 in a packed McDonald Jones Stadium there in Newcastle. So to get a win in New South Wales was important, but they go back into Queensland territory now to defend their own and, and try and get it back. It's fantastic that the first ever three-game series has come to a decider. Mm -hmm. It's what everybody wanted. It's yeah. what the fans always want. And Queensland have got their work cut out because it's a, it is a dangerous New South Wales side. So yeah, hopefully the girls in the Maroons can get it done, but they'll be tested. They'll be have to find some of that grit that got them over the line in round two, in game two. Mm. They'll have to come with that again because uh, both teams will be fighting each other out for the course of the eighty minutes. It'll, it'll be a great game. It was a uh, it was a wonderful spectacle. The second game in the rain. Some of the skill yeah. level of the girls mm. was outstanding in that in the rain. Hopefully it's dry. It'll be fast up in Townsville, and I think the game will be a cracker. Want to hear my theory? Go the good-natured hearts of the New South <laughs> girls, they let Queensland back into the game on purpose so we could have a decider in Game 2. And Game 3 is going to be completely different. It's going to be 30 to, like, 10 final score to New South. So you reckon it's going to happen in the men's too? Queensland just let let New South Wales win the next one just so they can take it home and beat them in um, Suncorp Stadium? I mean, hey, if it happens like that in the men's, <laughs> Spirit I'll take of it. rugby league. I'll take yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the men's, we'll move on to the men's yeah, game yeah, yeah. two at uh, MCG. Uh, Wednesday, 10.05 New Zealand, 8.05 Australian. Not much in terms of like controversy. Boring, eh? Uh, what? Well, no, well, it's been a slow build a way, up, yeah. a quiet build up. Yeah. Boring, I reckon. The only like for, <laughs> from the players, straight up. Lee, Liam Martin and Nanai. We're like, oh, maybe they're injured, maybe they're not. But it's not like a, it's not really a big deal compared to like game one with Nico Hines. Yeah, all yeah, that for, stuff. You know, for this being the 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 biggest spectacle on the rugby league calendar, um, it's a very quiet conversation. And there's people trying to build this up. They're yeah. trying to find ways. The coach, well, actually, Maguire is trying to find ways to fire up the Queenslanders. Billy Slater's had nothing to do with it, doesn't even care, doesn't even want to know. And um, it's gone quiet. Uh, maybe the first couple of days, you know, the Sunday, Monday, and now people are trying to find ways to poke the bears. But no one's giving anything. Um, you know, both I think the Queensland team and in the history have been always been real respectful of of what they do. Um, they understand that there's a quality New South Wales team. They play to what's in front of them. They don't build up, you know, they respect what they do. So I think, you know, this has always been the Queensland way. They don't come out, they don't start anything. They're always quiet. And even more so now that the coach is just as bad. He just keeps to himself. They just concentrate on what they can control and what they can do. And, you know, New South Wales always have had problems in their camps, whether it's someone injured, or whether it's the coach under pressure or whether it's the pressure of this game now that they have to win uh, because then it puts more pressure on, on on the coach in New South Wales again. So it's more the New South Wales and the media trying to build up something and try and find to fire this game up so that it gives people something to engage into. But it's been the I think this has been the quietest origin for me when it comes to the build up to game two than ever because this game's on the line for New South Wales. They have to win this game. Otherwise, the pressure keeps putting back on, on New South Wales again and, and Queensland keep just going about their business. They're always going to be quiet and boring, Queensland. But they know what job's in front of them. They know that they've got to go out there and, and get a job done. They know they've got to be uh, diligent with the players that they have because New South Wales team, I think, on paper, this team is their best team I think they've put on the field for a long time. And, and everyone's playing in their position. Everyone's in form um, coming up against a, a, a Queensland team that just knows how to win games, just knows how to play in the big games and all trusted when it comes to getting picked. Yeah, I thought it was going to be an exciting week, an exciting 10 days. The teams got into camp last Monday and they named them and straight away, um, Maguire went on the offensive and, and threw a hand grenade and tried to accuse Billy Slater of of uh, glass housing and you know talking, talking about 
New South Wales being dirty when he started showing some clips of Billy Slater in Origin yeah. doing yeah. some uh, not so clean things, but it, that was when Billy played, and, and I agree with some of the other Queensland media. So that was five years ago. You know, let it go, let us move on, and that's what Queensland have done. They've moved on, but they haven't fired another shot. They've had nothing else to fire New South Wales. Just like they will do on Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but it'll be awesome. It'll be awesome on uh, on Wednesday. Mm. Over a hundred thousand at, at the MCG. Uh, what a colosseum! Imagine running out to some of that. Oh, and, you know, in an arena like that. And, that's probably why they're trying to stir the pot a bit yeah. to get some emotion, get something going within their camp, find a reason. And Queensland don't need a reason. They just go out and play for their state and represent who they do. So yeah. Hopefully uh, it'll be a cracker. It is a great New South Wales side. I'll give it that. That is a, a very, very good state of origin team, ready to go. And uh, no doubt Maguire, what he said in public, he'll be doing some other stuff to fire him up and get him ready, stoke him, get him primed, get Latrell ready to go at him. Could be very, very dangerous. I've got some stats about origin to throw to you guys, see what you think. Uh, New <gasps> South Wales hold a 4-1 advantage uh, in origin matches at the MCG. So, mm -hmm. you know, one point to New South. <laughs> uh, and last time they played, it was 22-12 in 2019 to New South. So two points to New South Wales. Um, historically, after claiming game one in Sydney, the Maroons have gone on to win the seven series and yep. lose only one. The, so one point to Queensland. <laughs> One trophy, and, and seven then, trophies. Since Origin became a three-game series in 1982, the state that has lost the first game has come back to win the series just 10 times out of 41. Well, you're... Another point to Queensland. You're, you're Michael Maguire, bro, going way back. <laughs> you're going way back just trying to find something to bring the fans up. Nah, well, it's just, you know, this isn't controversial, though. This is just cold, hard facts. Yeah, know? yeah. But cool. I back my, my coach, my king... Michael Maguire. Your king. <laughs> Your king. Your king. Oh. 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 king. I, I'm sure he's going to get the job done. But anyway, we'll do our, our predictions then. So what first up, predicted scoreline for this game? I'm going to say Queensland win by six. I reckon it's going to be a tighter game. Um, I think it's going to be a tighter game. I think New South Wales have got, a like I said, better team on paper now. But I just know that, you know, the Queenslanders will do everything possible to try and clean sweep these guys. Like they, New South Wales have more to play for, but so do Queensland. And I think you know the team that turns up in the right mindset to, to to go after this big game will be the team that wins it. And yeah, I think Queensland by six. High score or low score? Ah, uh, twenty six twenty. Okay. Yeah, I think there's some points in this one. I'll go thirty two twenty eight Queensland. I think both teams will, will score plenty. See, I think as much as I know you guys love the Queensland spirit, I feel like there's a chance that they might take their foot off the pedal a bit because of how the win came about in the last game and maybe they're not as locked in as they would have been if it had been a harder fight compared to New South are going to be desperate to prove that wrong. So I think New South is going to get a decently big win 22 to 12, I'll say. Make it interesting, won't it? Uh, and who's your guys? Oh, Dills, your score prediction, sorry. Um, I reckon it will be pretty high scoring as well. So I'll go Queensland, 32, 28. Yeah. Far, just me with New South again, eh? But I could, see, I could see New South actually picking this one out with that squad. Yeah, that's that's right, Dills. You're right there. Uh, <laughs> but they won't. <laughs> <laughs> and who's your guys' man of the match going to be? Cherry Evans again? Cherry Evans. If um, they're, they're going to win Queensland, it's going to be on the back of what Cherry Evans does. I think the man bounces back in big style. A lot of question marks how he's going to be. And I think he's going to show some bravery and Reese Walsh will get it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, Reece, Reece Reece boy. Yeah. See, my one's similar narrative to Reese. Bounce back, trail mitt. <laughs> He's going to be the leader of uh, yeah. all the Blues good stuff. But yeah, that's Just all. before we go, um, you spend a lot of time in Melbourne. When it comes to an origin like this, who do the Victorians support? Where, where are most of them supporting? What team? Oh, they're, they're supporting the Melbourne players. Okay. 
the Melbourne players. Similar to why I, I, I went for Queens uh, for Queensland is because I played alongside some of those guys and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to support them because they play for Queensland. So I think it's a, a Queensland thing. A lot of the times when I played for Melbourne, we played um, we played against the Broncos after an Origin right. game as well. So, like, there was a little bit of a rivalry between, or obviously, already Craig Bellamy and Wayne Bennett, but then those guys played against each other, say, like on the Wednesday, and then we go play them again on, like, a Friday. So that was kind of the rivalry game for, for Melbourne as well because it was all built up around Origin as well, and those boys backing up because they prided themselves on backing up. So I think when the fans come, they, they back their, they back their um, Melbourne players. Was that the case when Bellamy coached New South Wales? No. No, because no. you, you stay strong to <laughs> the, the players, players, you know, you stay right. strong to the players, oh, you know well. what I mean? Like, no, nah, Bellamy's out the, out the back door, you'll stay with New South Wales, <laughs> mate. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. no, nah, I think it's I think it's Queensland. Big, big followers down there. Ooh. Sweet as well. That's that's all that's happening this week, so we can... Uh, yeah. Well, Fano, that's all we have for you guys on this episode. Make sure you tune in this afternoon on the latest gossip where it comes. Origin... Warriors for you fans in everything rugby league. Make sure you tune in. Let's go.